Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of In Defense Of. Today we're going to be talking about the musical, The Phantom of the Opera, and we're going to be talking specifically about Carlotta. Let's do it. So in this video, we're going to specifically talk about Carlotta as she appears in the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical and not in the novel or any of the other movie adaptations. Carlotta is depicted as being egotistical, mean, spoiled, but is that really a fair assessment? Let's take a closer look. Our first introduction to Carlotta is at the beginning of the play during a rehearsal of the opera Hannibal. An incident occurs where a piece of scenery drops and nearly hits her, and she flips out a little bit and issues a bit of an ultimatum to the theater owners. These things do all... Well, until you stop these things happening, this thing that does not happen! Yeah, just like that. And ultimately, that's a pretty understandable uh, thing, isn't it? Understandable, understandable, yes, it's perfectly understandable. Wait, wrong musical, wrong musical, wrong musical. We'll get to that one another time. But let's face it, Carlotta and the entire company of the opera have just been dealing with all kinds of nonsense and dangerous working conditions for potentially years now. This is um, the very... This is the very definition of a hostile work environment. And Carlotta's dealing with this every day. And what do we see? The, our first introduction to Carlotta is her just getting fed up with it and saying, I'm not taking it anymore and walking out. Fast forward a bit and Christine Daae, having just covered for Carlotta, essentially as her understudy, um, is receiving rave reviews from everybody. On top of that, Carlotta is now receiving threatening notes from somebody claiming to be the opera ghost. This naturally leads her to start to become just a little bit conspiratorial. She starts accusing Raoul, which is Christine's lover, uh, Christine, Andre, and Fehrman, who are the two managers, of conspiring against her to hurt her career. And can you really blame her? I mean, after all, that's kind of how it looks from her perspective. If we really look at what's going on here, from Carlotta's perspective, she demanded better working conditions and got replaced with Christine. This, is, this takes place before the time of labor unions, but today we would probably call her a scab. On top of that, Christine just so happens to be the love interest of the Vicomte de Chagny, who is the biggest patron of the Opera House. Yeah, that's not gonna look good. But Carlotta does have an ace up her sleeve. She is still the star. She is still the person that the audience is coming and paying money to see. And she's been gone for a while. This gives her a little bit of leverage. The two managers of the theater woo her back essentially by stroking her admittedly large ego. So Carlotta is back in the spotlight, and Christine, who was always a backup dancer to begin with, is playing a silent role. This has angered the Phantom, who decides to sabotage her performance and drop a chandelier on the stage trying to kill her. Okay, the term hostile work environment doesn't even begin to cover what's going on here. So by any metric, Carlotta is a victim in The Phantom of the Opera. She is being conspired against, just not by who she thinks is conspiring against her. And she's had somebody actually try to kill her on stage. She's dealing with things that are just absolutely unimaginable and gets pushed to the side when she demands better working conditions. At one point, Andrea and Furman 
even discuss how they can use this terrible situation to gain better publicity for the theater. So let me know what you think in the comments. Is Carlotta a villain in this story? Am I missing something here? Um, Go ahead and let me know. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, and I will see you all next time.